Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your girl Omoyo, and today I'm going to be talking about or giving you tips to secure the first first job or secure a job in general, so it doesn't become like a hassle and that you're not feeling like drained. You might feel like the tips and like my list is long, but this is a comprehensive list, so you're able to check all your boxes, cross your T's, dot them I's. But yeah, if you like what you see, please like down below and subscribe as well. Thank you. First of all, if you are currently looking to go into the job market or start searching for a job, you need a couple of prerequisites, of course. Like if you don't already know, you need a resume. And that's different from a CV if you don't already like live in America or if you haven't gone through like searching for a job and, and like getting a job in America, you need a resume, which is like a one page document, which is like a shrunken CV, so to speak. If you need more details, I'm going to link examples down below so you can see what like a good resume looks like. I'm also going to post like examples of like what your resume should not look like. It should have like white space, but it shouldn't be empty. It should tell a whole story about you. So like people want to like look at it, find keywords and like really reach out to you. So I think nowadays most companies use like um, algorithms to like go through resumes and so they look for keywords and those algorithms literally look at your resume for like less than seven seconds. And if it's a human being, the human being looks at your resume for less than seven seconds. So they're just looking for a couple of keywords and you want to make sure you align your resume to those specific keywords that you're looking for. Let me explain or they that they are looking for. Let me explain. So for your resume, you should look at the job description to see what you're looking for and try to align bullets of work you've previously done or like experiences you previously have. So like those keywords are being like highlighted on your resume. So for example, if they're saying they're looking for, for someone who like has developed like an algorithm to do this, this and this, if you've done similar work, then you should have the words algorithm on your resume, you should have the word develop, you should have the like um, system in which you developed this algorithm in. So like those should be things that are highlighted in your resume. So people always say you should say like what you've done with the impact you made and the results. So like for example, you built an algorithm that increased the efficiency of this by this within the number of months. So like you want your resume to be specific, you want it to speak to the experiences you've had and like so like you can really highlight yourself as an individual and stand out when that person like literally takes a quick glance at your resume they see those keywords they put you in the good pile onto the next phase so that's one for resume two is cover letters i feel like a lot of people hate these and i hate them as well but i have to come to like like writing them and like is i feel like a cover letter is an extension of your resume. So it's like washing the company, but not like really washing them. If you don't know what wash is, it's like highlighting why the company is the one and only company for you and why it's the next step in your career journey, essentially. So why people say this should be different from every for every company is that it should be tailored specifically to the job. Jobs at companies, jobs at companies are not like one and the same. Like they offer different things, even though it might be like, for me, example, it might be like, strategy consultant might be like in a specific field specific niche so you want to make sure you capture those things in your cover letter so you stand out for every job you um apply to either require a cover letter it should be customized i know it sounds like a lot but like it's something you want to make sure that you do it shouldn't look like something you just copied and pasted and most especially you should never ever make the mistake of like copying the cover letter pasting it and submitting it with another company's name on it. That is a big no-no because you can literally just do a control F just to make sure, even if you're copying and pasting, just to make sure like the company is not there because there'll be a zero for you and there'll be a no for you. So just try to make sure, I know it like it's a lot, but try to make sure that you're customizing cover letters as much as you can, even if you're not customizing all of it. So like a cover letter um, mostly is made up of two or like three parts first part is who you are and your qualifications second part is like why the job should be for you and then like the third part is like looking to hear forward and like just a quick highlight at the end so like the sec the first part might be like sort of similar for most of the jobs if you're applying to the same niche of jobs 
but the second one should always be customized the second paragraph should always be customized to the company because all these companies are different and they want to see different things on these cover letters so again you want to look for if you haven't highlighted um those keywords in your resume if not highlighted a couple if you want to gain experiences that you've not already had you should put that in the cover letter say oh i would like to work in this and this is the company that does this the best which is why this like this is where i see myself going to this is the next step in my career journey so moving on from that you have your resume you have your cover letter but like let's back up a little bit you should know you shouldn't just apply like higgy haga just apply left and right because there are job openings you should know for like some way like what industry you want to go into what kind of job you're looking for because you can, if you just go in like going like that you can be blindsided by so many different things you don't actually have an interest in like companies you don't want to work at so make that list so first of all i usually say make a list of like your 10 dream companies if you don't have about the 10 dream companies make a list of five and then make a list of 15 backup companies 15 to 30 backup companies to start so as you go through the application process you keep on like adding and adding to them and like give yourself a timeline so you don't just like fall back and you don't just do it last minute and procrastinate and put like you don't put your best foot forward you want to make sure you space out your job applications as much as possible so you give yourself time to put out your best to those companies because they are looking for the best so you want to make sure that if even if you're looking for jobs in like different like functional areas for example you're looking in pe you're looking in investment banking you're looking in consulting just make sure that you are targeted and it doesn't just seem like oh if an fp and a role comes up like in your job search you apply for it no i know it's, it seems very difficult to say because like when you get on that job interview it's going to be very difficult if you get on that job interview it's going to be very difficult to convince them as to why fpn a is the role for you when you originally started looking at like consulting p or investment banking so you want to make sure you have all your ducks in the run make sure that the jobs that you are actually applying to are jobs you actually want to do because it's very difficult to convince someone of something that you're not actually interested in to start with the fourth thing is know that there are rec recruiting cycles like um specifically for consulting or recruiting for the next year actually ends in like november it's crazy like you get a job in november and you actually don't start to like october july of like next year which means like they're already hiring or like starting their hiring from like the season before essentially so they start like putting out the applications in july interview throughout rounds if you have rounds and they offer like they give out job offers in like october latest like november so you want to know that you you want to know what just those job cycles are for, for you i know for like ib it might be a little bit later because they still take applications in january so just make sure that you have those like um recruiting cycles in the back of your head if you need help as to like how you should know what a recruiting cycle is for a specific job feel free to reach out to me if it's in like the finance realm but if it's in any realm i feel like we can figure it out together so feel free to reach out to me anyways but yeah there are recruiting cycles for most like most jobs so you want to know that you're not applying an off cycle because off cycle means like that means they're not really recruiting for like consulting that would be from like january to like may they're not really recruiting so it'll be very difficult to get a job and if you apply then if you apply then the chances of your resume or your application getting looked at drastically drastically reduces yeah. also to like find a job um you should use it in your network i don't know if you've watched if you, if you've watched how i got my first corporate job story um if you haven't watched it i'll link it up here somewhere but um if you've watched it you know that i got my job in a very crazy i won't say crazy way because it was not like i didn't plan plan it at all which is why i emphasize the importance of networking events like even though you might be tired like it's not something you really want to do you get like social anxiety networking just is not for you still go out there and do it like still go out there informal lunches and like coffee chats are more of like a better way to like network rather than feeling the pressure of like how going to like their office events or going to like a um like a fair a career fair where there's so many companies so you just feel like your social social anxiety on a hundred so just those small little like intimate um events are like better so like it's just like a one-on-one -on -one. if that even gives you anxiety you can go with a friend so like you people like that have similar interests to you so you guys talk 
but make sure not to overshadow 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 each other so you guys like highlights like you guys highlights like your strengths and highlights your skills and what you bring to the table as well so you want to make sure those networking events like you're going to them you're making sure to stand out i know it's very difficult to stand out because there are lots of people there but for one one thing i can give you advice on is like when you go there you shouldn't just say hi my name is this and just hand your resume and say i'm interested in this position and walk away you want to make a connection like let the person talk like um, come with like probing questions you want to be prepared by the way like have your questions down but make sure it doesn't sound like an interview this is a lot i know but like like make it convers as conversational as possible make the person like talk and once you like find that thing that like like maybe okay they had a project in france and you've been to france as well then you like say oh my god i've been to france as well like how was your experience there outside client work did you get to do anything fun i went to the third level of the eiffel tower i'm super scared of heights but i was able to do it like something like that so like they remember oh my god that person i spoke to today she also went to france and she's also a good candidate you know so like make connections like that and like go to all like all these like corporate events for like companies you've like shortlisted i know it might seem like a lot but like you want to make sure that you're putting yourself out there even if you've gone for a coffee chat go for a lunch hour even if you've gone for both go for a corporate event if you've gone for all three go for a career fair just meet them multiple touch points with like different people like really helps your case when you want to say oh my god i'm super interested in this company i've met with this this and this if you're able to call out a name of a person that you made a connection with during that, an application it's a plus for you so my last tip would be like know your why like know why you want the job like not just because it's a big name or because it's like just know your why know your story like so you can you're able to tell the story effectively to like if it's someone across the table or someone over the phone so they understand and they're actually able to like believe you like believe yourself very important super important <laughs> super important to believe yourself and know your why don't lie to yourself because even if you're able to get through all the steps and you actually start the job you might actually start hating it because you lie to yourself from the start from the get-go but that is the end of my spiel i hope this was super helpful i will link all helpful links like down there like resumes good resumes good cover letters bad resumes bad cover letters things you should not not do and also link websites of where you should look for like jobs like um websites that really helped me that i was then also able to send to people when they ask me as well but let me know your thoughts like is there any big tip i'm missing feel free to comment down below so everybody can benefit from this video as well but that has been like my experience so far those are my big tips for anyone applying for a full-time job or even an internship um, but yeah, thank you so much if you got all the way here. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Bye.